Hello, Ken. This is my uh, Michigan State versus Purdue pregame analysis. Uh, before I get into it too much, remember to like, subscribe, comment, and hit that notification bell down below. I do greatly appreciate it. Uh, where to start with this one? I feel like we need to be aware of the fact that Purdue can hurt some people if they're not paying attention. Uh, don't let the victory over Michigan turn into a hangover. Uh, that it's possible. It's possible, right? You're riding high, thinking you're untouchable, and then it's it's a team like Purdue that can really put a scare into you because of the uh, the way their offense is built, how dynamic their offense is, and and the way that they can throw up some big plays on you. So can't fall asleep on this one. Really got to be aware of the fact that uh, although Purdue has had a pretty up and down season, they have surprised some people um, and they've looked good at times. So got to take them seriously. It's enjoy the Michigan win for a day and get right back to work. Um, that, that's how it's got to be. Thankfully, uh, Purdue has actually played better on the road so far this year than they have at home. So I don't know, maybe that'll help us being on the road against a team like Purdue. I don't know what the what the story is there. Quite honestly, I haven't followed Purdue that closely, uh, but so far just based on their record and you know the, the amount of points they've put up on the road has actually been better than it has been at home. That could be just the matchups, you know, the way that the matchups kind of worked out, but it's a Purdue, Purdue team that's getting better every week, just like we are, just like everybody else in the country. Uh, it's a Purdue team that can really put a scare into you because of their ability to put up points. Um, and they've beaten some teams. They're coming off a win of themselves against uh, Nebraska. So not a team. I mean, their record shouldn't scare anybody. But not a team to be taken lightly, for sure. Uh, if you thought Michigan could put up a lot of points and uh, put up a lot of yards in the passing game, you ain't, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Purdue is closer to Western Kentucky. Uh, with even more talent at the wide receiver position. They're, they are going to put the ball in the air. Uh, they're going to have big plays. you got to limit those as best you can. And really, if we stick with our game plan of uh, Ben don't break, I think that helps us. Um, I would rather face Purdue in the red zone, quite frankly, than I would in the open field. They're much more dangerous, in my opinion, in the open field. So if we cannot give up the big plays for touchdowns, I think that's a good thing for us. Um, you know, a big play here and there is going to happen. You have to accept that. It's going to happen against Purdue. Uh, I will be shocked if, if Purdue doesn't wind up with some pretty big plays. But if you can find a way to keep those big plays from turning into touchdowns, you put yourself into a good position. Um, uh, what else? My predictions. Let's get to my predictions. I think Michigan State is going to win this one by... I think they're going to win... You know, I had a number, and now I'm second-guessing myself. I think they're going to win by 20. Um, I, and I think that Kenneth Walker is going to have over 250 yards rushing and three touchdowns, uh, continue to build that Heisman re resume. You know, if he's not towards the front of the Heisman race, then something's not right because he's having an incredible season. Just had five touchdowns against the rival. Uh, a highly vaunted Michigan defense, quite frankly, one that had really shut down everybody. And uh, Kenneth Walker comes out and throws up some huge numbers. So got to give him love. Got to give him credit for that. You know, uh, anybody that doesn't have him at least in the top three for the Heisman race is not paying attention to college football. Um, I expect a rebound for Peyton Thorne. He had a little bit of a rough game against Michigan, understandably. Uh, Michigan kind of puts you in some tough situations, especially with their pass rush uh, and the way that they call defense on the back end. But, you know, he did enough to get the job done. That's all we're asking of him. And sometimes you got to lean on your teammates when you're having a bad day. And I think, quite frankly, he just had a bad day. Started out rough. And credit to Thorne for being able to settle down. Things definitely could have spiraled from there. Uh, but, you know, he's always remained cool and calm. He's done a good job of keeping his composure, and he did that again. He showed it again. So, you know, that was – you come out in a big game like that, emotions are running high, and you have uh, two turnovers. You know, that can spiral, and that can really derail a team. But they didn't let that happen. He stuck to his guns. And, uh, you know, I think he takes a lot of that from his coach, Mel Tucker. You know, if, if you have bad plays like that, then forget about them and just keep chopping.
That's it. It's that. It, it sounds so simple, and yet it can be so difficult to get 18, 19, 20 year old kids to really understand that. You know, to put that play behind them and then to really settle in and be like, you know what, that was just, that was the outlier. I'm not going to let that turn into something more. That's not always an easy thing to try to teach these these younger guys. So uh, credit to Mel Tucker, credit to Peyton Thorne for being able to settle in, not let that rattle him for the entire game. Uh, that throw he threw to, to Reed over the shoulder on the fourth down, was that was a game-winning throw right there. Without that throw, Michigan gets the stop and the whole – the complexion of the whole game changes. That was a huge, that's perfect throw. Perfect throw by Peyton Thorne. Perfect route by Reed. Great catch. I mean, it's just a perfect play, but that play never happens if, if uh, Peyton Thorne doesn't settle himself down early in the game and, and just stick to his guns, right? That's what set him up to make that play late in the game, in my opinion. So, you know, you, there was some things, lots of things to learn from this one. Lots of good happened. Obviously, he got away with the win. I shouldn't say get away with. We went out and won it. That is what it is, right? You know, we went out. We got the win. It was a big one. But you got to put that one behind you now. You know, savor that one at the end of the year when you've met your other goals. That was just one of your goals. Put that one behind you. Prep for Purdue like you've prepped for everybody else. And uh, everything should take care of itself. Um, I don't have much else to say. Our corners were a little bit up and down against Michigan, which kind of scares me going into this one because Purdue's wide receivers are really talented. Uh, Purdue's passing attack is, is far better and more dynamic than Michigan's is. So there's a little bit of concern there, but I think our defense is good enough to to generate enough stops, and I think our offense is proven that, you know, we can move the ball and we can score points ourselves. So, yeah, that's why I'm feeling Michigan State by 20. I think our, run, our rushing attack and, you know, our, our offense as a whole, our defense's ability to generate enough stops, especially in the red zone, will be enough for us to get that big win. Uh, but, there, you know, if, if we come out without any fire, if we come out uh, thinking we'll just, you know, get through Purdue without much trouble, then we could be in for a surprise. However, that being said, I, I say it because I have to say it, but I don't feel like that's going to be an issue uh, in this one. I, I think Mel Tucker is going to have these guys ready. Based on everything I've seen so far this year, there's nothing – that would make me believe that uh, Mel Tucker isn't going to have these guys ready to play. So that's it on this one. I'm not going through each position. I feel like I've done that enough. Everybody knows what, you know, what we need to look for, what we want to see out of these guys at this point. So I just wanted to give a little bit of a, a matchup analysis, see where these guys are at. I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Uh, you know, it was a big win, but you got to put it behind you now. You got to move on to produce the next one up and they've surpri surprised some teams. Uh, so if you don't take care of your business, then you're putting yourself into a, uh, a bad position. This is, I know Iowa hasn't looked good as of late, but uh, Purdue beat them 24-7. to Now, again, our offense is not as bad as Iowa's, but also our defense isn't as good. And they've, they've put up a lot of points on people. Um, a lot of points. So you got to watch out for that offense. You got to take care of your business on the back end. And again, it, as long as we keep those big plays from turning into touchdowns, then I feel good about where we're at and how this thing will shake out. So that's it. Those are my thoughts on the game. Short and sweet, nice and simple. Um, so again, my predictions, Michigan State by 20. Kenneth Walker over 250 yards rushing and over three touchdowns, at least three touchdowns. Uh, I expect him to have a nice day against this Purdue defense. I really do. Um, you know, he's had a good game against most teams at this point, so... Uh, I think Michigan State, you know, I think that, uh, as I said Michigan State, I think that uh, if we can run on Michigan, then I think we should be able to run on Purdue. And I think we prove some things, not just to the country, not just to the nation, but we prove some things to ourselves, you know. This, this offensive line looked great, and they can get the job done. Give them those opportunities. Don't feel like you have to throw the ball. Just do what you do. It's working. Uh, it's keeping defenses on their heels and uh, love the play calling. Great play calling offensively and defensively. I thought it was a good game plan, good play calling. I, I you know, no complaints from me. <laughs> so let's try to keep the ball rolling. Uh, let's put that victory behind us. We'll, we'll enjoy it at the end of the year, like I said. But for now, it's, uh, it's on to the next game. Take care of Purdue and, and keep this ball rolling. That's it. That's all I got on this one. Uh, 
that'll wrap it. Remember, all love, all the time. Peace.